country along with Jim Brasiano with the KU Jayhawks victory parade. And Jim, it's starting off with a lot of noise. It's going to get noisier as the day goes on. Well, I tell you, Charlie, you couldn't have asked for a more beautiful day for a parade. 80 degrees out, no wind, and this place is packed. The city has been on a high all week, and there she is. There she Cinderella is. Cinderella herself, what can you say about that? What a that? perfect honorary guest for the lead of the parade, the honor of the Cinderella Jayhawks. KU was an unranked basketball team at the end of the regular season, as low as 33rd in one poll. But uh, they worked their way through the national tournament to win it all, so they definitely have the title of the Cinderella team. That's great. Cinderella live and in person from Disneyland in California. And, of course, the Cinderella coach right behind him, Larry Brown. to accomplish his records, Jim, and even talk about them in the short time that he goes by us. And there's the Dick Vitale Mop Squad. <laughs> we'll see them again October 15th when Dick Vitale shows up for Late Night with Larry to scrub the floor. There's the band director going by, Ron McCurdy. What a job he's done. He says this basketball pep band never gave up on the Jayhawks, and they really showed their stuff in Detroit when they helped keep the parade, I mean, keep the, uh, keep the, uh, fans in the basketball game. Next up, Danny Manning, Archie Marshall, and Chris Piper. Yeah, the three seniors all graduating, tri-captains for this year's team. Right behind them, Bob Frederick, athletic director, his wife and family. And then comes Jimmy the bus driver, all the way from Detroit, a special surprise for Larry Brown. They flew him in just for the parade. Larry's good luck charm, along with the Jayhawks, drove the Kansas Jayhawks to the national championship. And back to drive them through the parade. I'm surprised he isn't driving a bus. There's so many people to be in the parade that they're gonna keep everything going pretty close and pretty fast, so we'll try to comment as they go by. And this is a surprise, uh, surprise entry that I'm not sure I even know what this entry is. Oh, I know what it is. It's South, South Junior, Junior High, High because Chris Piper, of course, graduated from South Junior High, and they wanted to pay tribute to him, so they're here in force. Of course, all of the schools, uh, elementary schools, junior highs, the high school, all turned out for the parade here today. There's a look from above. That's right at 7th in Massachusetts, and it is packed here as it is all the way down the parade route, 10 blocks long. They're moving people along here pretty quick, starting to get backed up. Bob Nelson, the old Jayhawk, uh, came in right behind South Junior High. I believe he was in that car. I couldn't get too good a look at him. And then we have a special balloons and more truck. It's loaded with about 500 uh, blue and red KU balloons, and uh, when they get down to 9th in Massachusetts, those balloons will go off And uh, as a final tribute to the Jayhawks. Then comes the uh, Crimson Girls, the pep squad, on top of the big fire truck. There you can see them way. No, that's, uh, I believe that's the uh, the car right Crimson, behind. Crimson Girls there, Crimson Charlie. Girls. Here's the uh, pep squad on top of the uh, Lawrence Fire Department truck. Here they come. Uh, a big hand as they go by our booth. We're right here at 7th and Massachusetts, looking west as the uh, parade comes on to Massachusetts from 7th Street, and there you see the Crimson Girls. Is that the Crimson Girls there? And you look down the parade route. Ah, down the parade route, down look Massachusetts. Look at you, the Crimson Girls are going by. Some of the clowns. Everybody in a festive mood today. This all concludes with the basketball banquet tonight, which has been sold out for months. Oh, it's packed. You're gonna have 12, 13, 1400 people uh, crammed into the holodome for one final tribute to the Jayhawks and to Larry Brown. They have about 55 units in this parade, Jim, and they're estimating anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half that it will take for everyone to get by. But there's an unknown factor here because they didn't require people to, uh, to enter the parade. So anybody that shows up can be in the parade today, and uh, they don't know until they show up how many they're going to have. So there's the Crimson Girls going by our booth right now, along with a KLWN uh, truck. Uh, Bill Lee in there broadcasting. Of course, they carry with the Jayhawk network, and uh, right behind them, Bob, uh, Bob, uh, Bob, Bob Davis Max and Max Falkenstein, the voice of the Kansas Jayhawks on radio. What a year for them. As you look at some of the Special Olympians coming by. I asked uh, Bob Frederick, I mean, I asked uh, 
Max Falkenstein if this was the most exciting uh, year he's had, and he said, yes, definitely, uh, this was the uh, the most exciting year that they've ever had uh, uh, following the Hawks. There's Bob and Max. And some wheelchair athletes following up behind. Max says the 1952 team, which also won the national championship, was a great year, but it was sort of expected, and this, of course, was a bit of a surprise. Larry Brown, very, very active with the Special Olympics, Jim, and we're going to see uh, several members of the Special Olympics uh, here today to pay tribute to uh, Larry Brown and what he's done and what he's meant to their programs. Here's some of the kids now coming in. They sponsored the basketball clinics last summer, of course. They went around the state playing uh, warm-up games uh, at the beginning of the year, Jim, three or four different places uh, around the state, raised some $20,000 for the Special Olympics. And they're very, very appreciative of uh, everything that the Jayhawks have done for them. Again, a look at some of the fans here today. We're glad that you can't be here in person. We're glad you're joining us live here on Sunflower Cable Vision as Milton Newton comes by. What a tremendous player he turned out to be this year. What can you say about the junior from Washington, D.C.? I tell you what, played in 35 games this year, averaged 11.6 points, five rebounds, did it all. Played in the Pan Am Games last Saturday for the Virgin Islands, last summer for the Virgin Islands, was elected to the Midwest Regional all Tourney Team. Honorable mention all Big Eight this year. What a year for the junior. Here's John Weatherwax and his pep band. Uh, Putting a little life into the parade. Weatherwax and company all around town. Can you take a look at Milt Newton? Had 29 points in that game against Oklahoma State in the Big Eight tourney for his career high. Steady performer. Came in for Archie Marshall. Marvin Maddox, right behind Milt Newton. Maddox, the senior from Pomona, California. Haskell Intertribal Club, Haskell Junior College, behind the Jayhawks all the way. Look at Mike Maddox. Mike Maddox, a freshman. He's expected to contribute a lot next year for the Jayhawks. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Played in 24 games this year. Then the Lawrence High Pep Band. Boy, they had a lot to cheer about this year. Boy, they certainly the did. Lions they. going to the state championship. They know all about the state championships. <laughs> Unexpected pleasure for Lawrence High School this year. And of course, Chris Piper played on that state championship basketball team for Lawrence High four years ago. Danny Manning played the, for the runner-up team. Right. I think it was five years ago for Chris. Five years for Chris. Four for Danny. Got uh, Clint Normore. Having a little bit of trouble seeing our monitor here on this bright, sunny day, Jim. Glad we have the sun, though, rather than the drizzly rain. There's the... Uh, Chamber of Commerce float. <laughs> Paying tribute to all of the excitement the Hawks have brought to Lawrence this year. Some of the fans up on the rooftops on the roof in downtown times. Lawrence. All over the place. Biggest traffic jam we've had in a long time around here. There goes Clint Normore and into your picture. There's a couple of more Jayhawks. There's Bob Nelson, the old Jayhawk. Marvin Maddox in there. And here's the Cobras, Jim, of Kansas City. Brian Wilson is their director.
of applause from the crowd in attendance. I believe they, uh, I believe they strutted their stuff at the Rose Bowl, didn't I'm they, this I year? I was thinking I'd seen them during the college bowl season. Well, here comes another uh, convertible with a Taco John's mascot in it. Can't see who else is in there. Right behind will come Jeff Gelder. Jeff Gelder. As you look back behind Jeff and the Next big float on its way. There's Jeff. Jeff Charleston, Illinois, sophomore. He'll be back next year to lead the juniors. What a job he did this year. 32 games, Charlie, and that's a lot. That's a lot. Shot 42% from the field, 68% from the free throw line. This is an Ethan Smith moving in storage and Charlton Manley float. Throwing out all kinds of goodies to the kids. Bubble gum and whatever. Bob Johnson up there, I see. And who do we have here? Is that Lincoln Miner? That's Lincoln Miner going Lincoln by. Lincoln Miner, I believe. There he is. Lincoln stuck with the Jayhawks this year. Junior out of Houston, Texas. Played for Midland Junior College. Played in 34 games this year. Excellent job at guard for the Jayhawks. Right behind him is... Uh, Sean Alvarado Sean coming Alvarado. in your picture. Red shirted this year. He'll be back for his senior year next year. Naismith Hall is saluting the uh, McCollum Hall, saluting the Jayhawks. Well, they're keeping this parade going fast, Jim. Oh. Old West long. Lawrence, Old West Lawrence, several uh, associations being represented here today. Here comes Old West Lawrence. There you look at Sean. Sean Alvarado. And redshirted this year, expected to be a strong force for the Hawks next season. There he is, Kevin Pritchard. Kevin Pritchard. Outstanding sophomore from Oklahoma out of Tulsa. Average 10.6 points a game, a couple of three rebounds a game. Moved over to the point guard this year. Started every game except one game that he was injured. Right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> that horse was being uh, provided by Hal Johnson with his horse and wagon, saluting uh, for Naismith Hall and McCollum Hall. Now things slowing down just a little bit as they pile up a little bit down the line. Here are the kids coming up for the autographs. Boy, you should have seen them cramming around the kids, <laughs> around the players when they first showed up down on the on 7th Street, Jim. It was all the players could do to get to their assigned cars because everybody wanted one last autograph. Again, I haven't heard the crowd estimates, Charlie. It was supposed to be upwards 30,000 plus. I heard numbers of 50,000 fans out today. I think almost every business is shut down early, so everyone would have a chance to get here. And again, we're glad that you don't have the chance that you're watching with us today. There's yes. a look down Massachusetts Street. Is south this, along Mass Street. This is a first for us, Jim, for Sunflower Cablevision. The first time we've ever been able to do anything live outside the studio, except for, of course, the city commission meeting and one uh, uh, event that we handled uh, at Liberty Hall. A short notice, too. I think it has been a tremendous job to bring you this today. I think almost everybody with the convertible is in this parade today. Another tribute to Dick Vitale with the Mop Squad. You saw a short, <laughs> that's what the uh, the uh, bald head in the mop is for. That's Dick Vitale's tribute. He'll be here uh, hopefully October 15th. Kansas Sports Bar and Grill and Tin Pan Alley. They've been busy the last couple of weekends. Here's Fogg's family, Mitt Allen, and uh, getting my notes out here. Here goes Scooter Berry. Always a crowd favorite. Mitt Allen and Bob Allen a minute ago. Mitt played on the very first Final Four team that played in Kansas City. Here comes another van. Well, believe it or not, Charlie, we're getting down to the final third of this parade already. <laughs> it's been 15 maybe, minutes. Maybe this thing is going a little bit faster than they thought. Well, they wanted to keep it going uh, at a good pace, but uh, they're really hooking right by. Here comes uh, Marvin Branch and Keith Harris Keith on Harris the way. Keith Harris and Marvin Branch. They'll be coming into your picture shortly. There it is. There's 
Keith. In and out of the doghouse this year, but he finished up. Came back up a storm, didn't he? First man off the bench for the back liners. It's just, this is just the end of what's been a tremendous year and a tremendous past couple of weeks, Charlie, and it's all going to start back up before you know it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> real quick. October will be here real quick. There's hey, Mark Randall. Mark Randall. Had the red shirt this year to have a jaw fixed. Uh, he'll be back for his junior season, I believe it is, isn't it? Junior season mm -hmm. next year. He was along to give moral support uh, when the Hawks needed it, though. They got help from everybody. Keith and Marvin. Someone gave them some daisies, I believe. Well, the city will have their hands full cleaning up after this parade. <laughs> Here comes a big truck. I believe this is a concrete pumper truck. I think from. Uh, I'd imagine being red is probably Penny Ready Mix. Yeah, yeah. Penny Ready Penny. Mix. Of course, Bill Penny, a uh, famous uh, KU alum. In track and field, he's always done everything he could to support the Jayhawks. Oh, he dressed up that truck nice. Oh, I hear you, Mark Randall, going by. Get a shot of the Fanny's truck. Like a fresh paint job. I believe so. He didn't pick Bill out. He might be in there driving it. Caterpillar saluting the Jayhawks. Multiple sclerosis. Chili peppers tonight in the KU ballroom. <laughs> you know anything about that? No. I'll stay away from that one. It's called Valley Satellite. We can look along with Martin Tractor. And here comes Ryan Gray. Ryan Gray. Another one of the team's good luck charms. Father Captain Gray driving a car. They presented Ryan with a new bicycle at the beginning of the season. Kickapoo Nation School coming into your picture there. They let out their school, Jim. They're uh, located up in the northeast corner of Kansas, uh, around, I believe, Halstead. They let school out for the, they took one of their snow days and used up a snow day so they could bring the entire school down here to honor the Hawks. They've been following the Hawks all year long. They're located between Horton and Hiawatha. Kickapoo Nation School. Well, there's people here from Kansas City and Topeka. All the way from Denver, Colorado, St. Louis, Springfield, Nebraska, Oklahoma. They've had calls from several hundred miles away, people wanting to know if they could get here in time, could they park. And here's Bill Pope coming into the picture, I believe, in just a minute. There here's he is. Bill. He's another one that's been with Larry Brown and the Jayhawks. Team the manager is just as much of a good luck charm as Ryan Gray. See who that was. Oh, I'm sure he is. So the mayor's in there someplace. Is that Win Winter? Center Win Winter. Car full of kids. Another KU grad, I believe. Here's Wint. Well, everybody's a KU fan today, Jim. Oh, you have to be. <laughs> if you're not, let's not be here. With so many of those Jayhawk t-shirts out there, 
everybody in red and blue. Would you believe thousands and thousands of Jayhawk t-shirts? You see a new design every time you turn the corner. And I think it's, here's Wavy Gravy. Wavy Gravy, doesn't you'll have like, to tell me like about anyone. that one. Doesn't like anybody in 1988. <laughs> we'll have a little thing on the Lawrence Report with Wavy tonight. Well, there's been some rumors that some famous KU alums have uh, made their way back to Lawrence. We haven't seen any of them yet, and we're not sure that we will, but there certainly is an awfully lot of talk about fellows like Clyde Lavella, Wilt Chamberlain, Jojo White, some of the names that you remember from the long, long history of championship basketball at KU. And this is just another chapter. Another chapter. Maybe one of the greatest, Jim. This has been one of the most exciting teams that uh, Kansas has ever fielded has really won the hearts of uh, the people statewide and nationwide. Many people uh, adopted the Jayhawks this year as their team uh, simply because they were the Cinderella team of the year. <laughs> you know what that means. You see it in the picture. Uh -huh. The fat lady is about ready to sing. And we have her here today. And uh, I talked with the fat lady just a little bit earlier uh, before the uh, parade started. Of course, it's Art Sloan, <laughs> the teacher at yeah. Lawrence High School. And uh, the fat lady thinks that Bob Frederick ought to definitely consider hiring her <laughs> as a permanent fixture with the Jayhawks. I asked him how good he was with the national anthem. <laughs> he said he can hit the high C. <laughs> he can hit the high C. Got the drink? <laughs> well, that's been sort of the theme of the Jayhawks this year. When the fat lady sings, the Jayhawks will spread their wings. And that was, of course, the, uh, the uh, slogan on the backs of the T-shirts that the Jayhawks won when they snipped the nets in uh, Kemper Arena. And of course, that's the most popular T-shirt that we've seen uh, since uh, the Hawks returned was uh, the one uh, depicting that slogan on the back. Uh, and the Jayhawks spread their wings as the fat lady sings. And uh, there she is, Art, Slo Art Sloan from Lawrence High School, dressed as the fat lady. And I think that we'll be able to pick up some of her singing when he gets here. <laughs> that's a tough one. I'm glad you handled it. <laughs> Maybe we'll just listen as the fat lady goes by our vantage point here at 7th and Massacre. seeing President Reagan and after uh, being through all of the hoopla that uh, uh, that they've been through uh, in the last two weeks, I'm sure they don't want to come to this. I spoke with Alvin Gentry yesterday and he was saying that uh, that was one of the highlights of his life, was getting a chance to meet President Reagan in person at the Rose Garden. And that was the very few people that ever get the chance to meet.